everyone, how are we all? Hope you're all doing very well. Welcome back to my channel and to a what I spend slash how much I spend in a week living in London video and also kind of like a savings goal update and that kind of thing all in one. So if you're in the mood for that, then stick around because I'm going to be going through everything. I'm fully disclosing how much I spend on rent, utilities, and I've tracked my whole weekly spending living in London. But before we do get into the video, I want to say a huge thank you to today's video sponsor, which is Hyperjar. So for those of you who aren't aware what Hyperjar is, it's a account that works for you and makes your money work better for your financial goals and spending. So Hyperjar really wanna focus on improving your relationship with money. Basically what Hyperjar is, is it works alongside your main bank account. You can actually track your spending in a much more sensible way, which is perfect for anyone out there who is very similar to me, trying to get on the property ladder to be a first time buyer. Maybe you're saving for a car, a holiday, fingers crossed if we're gonna actually get away anytime soon, a wedding. Maybe you're a parent at home and you're trying to teach your children to be responsible with money. All of these things will apply to you so I created a Hyperjar account in seconds. There is the mobile app and then you request a card. It comes in this little blue envelope and this is the card. So it's a debit MasterCard and it has contactless as well. Really cool looking card, I think. And the app is so, so easy to use. And basically the way Hyperjar works is you can create spending and saving jars. So I've created five jars and then the main jar is my wallet. So you deposit money from your main account to your Hyperjar account, which is then preloaded onto your bank card. You can also use Apple Pay, which is brilliant and really, really handy. And then you can transfer funds to your jars to top the jars up. So you add money to the jars. So I created an eat and out jar, a fuel jar, a groceries jar, a shopping jar, and a travel jar. Now you can use these and spend directly from these simply by just assigning each jar and then linking it so when you next use a transaction, you can do it, say for instance I did shopping, I can link it into like unlink it to every time I use my Hyperjar card or in the Apple Pay, it will deduce it from that pot. So it's a really, really clear and concise way to see where you are spending. So Hyperjar is approved by the FCA, which is the Financial Conduct Authority. Hyperjar also have some fantastic money assigned partner brands that will get you an annual 4.8% growth rate, which is really brilliant. There's brands such as Hive, Feel Unique, and My Protein. So there's a lot on there, which is really fab. I will leave Hyperjar linked down below. It's genuinely changed the way that I do spend money and I found it so useful to track how much I've spent this week. I felt like I've spent a lot less because I can visually see how much I've spent. So for those of you who maybe are new or haven't followed my channel for a while, I've lived in London for five years now. And when I first moved to London, I was so, so taken aback about how expensive this city is. I'm from the Northeast of England and you know, things up there are real cheap. I was living at home, I wasn't paying rent. And when I moved to the city, I was a student, so I really needed to budget my money well. So I feel like I've got a good understanding of where my money goes, where I can save, and where I can slightly spend. So we're gonna go through how much I spend in a week and then total it up at the end so you can get a rough idea of how much I'd say an average person spends in London. Sip of the coffee because it's gonna get very numerical. <laughs> so first I'm gonna start with how much I spend on rent bills, utilities, and things that come out of my account every single month. So our rent for a two bed flat in Zone 3 London, in Southwest London, is 1,400 pounds a month. And for those of you who are aware, I live with Zara, so we split the rent 50-50. We've got two equal sized double bedrooms. This flat is huge. I would recommend if you are moving to London, definitely look further out of Central because you will save so much money. Rent has definitely changed throughout the pandemic, but I'd say roughly between 700 and 1,000 pounds each is pretty much average for rent in London. You can do cheaper house shares, but we really wanted to have a flat, just the two of us, so it's 700 pounds. Utilities, so our gas is 129 pounds and 46 pence. Between the two is 64 pounds and 73 each. Our internet is 33 pounds, so that's 16.50 each. Our water bill, Thames Water pretty much supply the whole of London, is 27.83, so it's around 13.92 each. Our TV license, if you aren't from the UK, you've got to pay for your TV license for, I think it's BBC, which is like advert free TV. Everyone has to pay, it's a legal requirement. It's 13.37, so that's around 6.69 each. Um, our council tax, is 141 pounds, so it's around 70 pounds and 50 each. So the total for all of my rent and bills, split with Zara 50-50, all of the utilities, everything that we legally have to do is 872 pounds and 34 pence. So that is with, that's just flat rate. That's without any luxuries, any memberships, any subscriptions, 
nor food, that is just literally Hanwich Reap here. And I would say that is pretty average for London. We do also get two car park spaces included in our rent as well, which in London is pretty good going. So that's total 87234. Now I'm going to go through all of my monthly expenses, so things that aren't essentials but I pay for every single month. So my mobile phone is £43.37, which is around average. It's a contract I pay every single month over a two year period. My gym membership is £30 a month, um, which is actually quite affordable, I would say. The gyms in that area are really quite expensive. Some start at like £60 up to like £120. So we do have to drive to our gym, which then comes onto our car. Zara has a car, she's had it for years, whereas I had to sell my car to move to London. But then I recently got a car. I pay £200 a month for my car, which I know does sound like a lot of money, and getting a car in London is absolutely not an essential. However, because we live in Zone 3, we are a little bit further out of central London, so it is actually quite easy to drive here, much easier to do grocery shops. When we visit family, we can drive, we drive to the gym. So it kind of justifies the price. Other monthly things, Things that I do pay for insurance my camera is £3.49 I pay for Spotify which is a music streaming service I pay for Amazon Prime which is for TV and also for deliveries which is £7.99 Adobe which is what I use to edit my images on is £7.99 Epidemic Sound is what I use for my music for YouTube that is £9.99 Netflix we all know and love is £9.99 now TV, again, another subscription service is $9.99. I maybe should look at canceling that actually because we rarely use it. I pay $6.99 to Apple for phone storage for the cloud, and then um, £1.59 to Google for a larger capacity of emails because I send a lot of emails every single day. So adding all of that up, my monthly outgoings with rent and utilities and also luxury items and subscriptions is £1,215.73. So a week, that is £303.93. So that's before I've even stepped foot out of the door. That's just what comes out of my account every single week, £303.93. Now I know that's a lot. It is it is a large amount of money. However, I know every single thing that comes out of my account, I do have a justification for it. So let's now move on to how much I spent in a week. So I've kept a log in sync with Hyperjar. So Hyperjar obviously is fab because you can spend directly from your jars. So let's start with Monday. Monday is usually when we do our food shops for the week. You know me and Zara love eating out, but we make so many fresh meals at home, it's cheaper. I would say if you first move to London, go crazy, enjoy it, go to all the restaurants you really love. But when you've lived here for so long, you really understand the importance of budgeting and eating at home. So we shop in Lidl, our total grocery bill, at Lidl was £50.55, and, and then we had to just go to Sainsbury's to get some top-ups of bits that we couldn't get in Lidl, which was £4.65, and again, we split that between myself and Zara. All the rest of Monday was just working from home, again, a pretty standard day, and then I had to help my friend Sam shoot a campaign at a bar in Shoreditch. So we got the tube and the bus there, we have to get the bus down to the tube and then the tube to the destination, which was 6 55 and then the drinks bill between me, Zara, and Sam was £28.33 and that was for three cocktails. So that's pretty average in London. I'd say a cocktail's around eight to ten pounds, usually more depending on where you are. It was a really lovely bar actually. So the total for Monday because obviously me and Zara split our grocery bill was £62.48. Now Tuesday again was another working from home day and whenever I'm working from home or editing those types of videos that you watch, I generally won't actually spend anything and I actually didn't spend a single penny on Tuesday, like not a penny. I didn't get on any public transport, I didn't buy any coffees. I just started off with a gym session, just did some like cardio and um, the gym is fab because it's obviously you know, it's a really affordable price for London. All I did was sit on my laptop, edit, edit, edit. For lunch, I used leftovers and ingredients that we'd made from the little shop. And then I took myself on a lovely little walk and just read my book in the park and took a nice coffee rather than buy one. So that's kind of how I balance it out. Monday might seem like I spent a lot of money, but then I usually think if I've spent a lot the previous day, I'll try and rein it in for the day after. So yeah, Tuesday's total was absolutely zero pounds, which we love. So now Wednesday was a bit of a spenny one, I'm not gonna lie. I did go a little bit crazy in H&M. <laughs> so I was shooting with my friend Ewan, Mr. Carrington, who's also a fellow YouTuber, content creator. Um, so I got the tube into town for 6.55. Um, it was a scorching hot day. And when you're on the tube, you can't really drink So um, with your mask on, sorry. So I had to get an iced coffee just to cool me down from Pret, which was 2.85. Um, and then we'd finished up shooting. Oh my God, it was a really, really hot day. So I treated myself to um, an ice lolly 
three and I got you and one as well, which was four pounds 40. It wasn't a serpentine little snack bar in Hyde Park. So you're paying like a premium price. So yeah, two pound 20 nice lolly is a bit of a joke. And then on the way back, um, near the tube station in Brixton. There's a huge H&M and they had a sale on and I did get a lot I'm not gonna lie and I didn't need it. However, the amount of clothing I got for the price I also had a 25% off cord for my birthday. So that's like my summer shop done now It's you know, it's height of summer I thought I'd just give myself a little treat as a little birthday treat to myself uh, I spent 41 pounds and 25 pence in total in H&M. So my total for Wednesday was 45 pounds and 65 pence. So the shopping trip definitely wasn't needed, but I thought I'd made the most of the sale. Thursday was a pretty chill one. I um, had a meeting in the morning with Ewan. We met a lovely PR and we were just speaking about some interior projects and things like that. So I took the tube into town, which was 6.55. Now tubes do vary on cost, but like I say, I have to get the bus. And then the tube, depending on your zone, is depending on how much it costs. And then we had our meeting, had the lovely little event. And then me and Ewan had a cheeky little look in Tiger, which is a homeware store. Um, and I got us a new meal planner. You know how we love to cook at home. We used the last of our sheets. So I used the meal planner, which was six pounds in total. And I got some like fridge magnets and some candles. So Thursday's total came to 12 pounds and 55 pence. So not a lot at all. It's the end of the week. So Friday um, was a pretty, you know, standard day again, working from home. Um, I actually went and got my hair cut. You might be able to tell it's a little bit different. So I go to a barber that's super close to us. They're really, really lovely guys. Um, they charge 18 pounds for a men's haircut. Um, and I give them a two pound tip. So it's 20 pounds for my haircut. I go every two weeks. So monthly is around 40 pounds. And then again, it was just a working from home day. We had lunch which is leftovers. I think we made like a noodle salad, which is so delicious. Um, it's just like a really nice, healthy and fresh noodle salad. And then we had a really lovely event on the evening. Zara had actually booked some tickets for us to see Dirty Dancing at an outdoor cinema called Luna Cinema in Clapham, which is in South West London. So the ticket was 15 pounds. I'm including it in this because we did pay for it like way, way back, but it's kind of like a spending this week. Um, and we actually went to Lidl again because we didn't actually get picnic supplies we didn't think so um we spent 17 pounds and 89 pence in little we got like a bottle of prosecco some bread some olives some cheese like a really lovely picnic so the total for friday was 43 pounds and 95 pence so Saturday was a super chill day. We actually repainted the living room. It's still white, but we took down the gallery wall. You guys have already seen that video. Um, so we went to B&Q and we bought some paint, some new plants and a dust sheet. So it wasn't a lot and um, the total was 27.47. I didn't split that with Zara. I just covered that bill. Um, we usually split things like that, but I just thought because it was for a YouTube video, it's kind of like my expense. It's 27.47 in total. And then we made dinner at home that evening. So we didn't really spend anything else after that. We had some friends around for some cocktails in the evening. And um, we had all the ingredients that we needed in the flat from our food shop, which is a dream. We've got a well-stocked bar cart, good tip. If you want to save on drinks out, get a good bar cart and you can invite people around and it costs half the price. House party is the best part of So yeah, that was literally it for Saturday. We didn't do anything else. And then Sunday again, we literally, I didn't spend a penny. We had the whole day in the flat. I went to the gym um, our gym is really, really good because there's actually like a spin studio in there. There's a whole hit studio. So for 30 pounds a month, it's actually really, really good. So we did a spin class. So we paid 30 pound a month for our gym, which is brilliant. And then we just came back and had a really lazy day of watching Netflix. Again, why we have the subscription. We just made some food and just chilled. It was just really, really nice. So again, didn't spend a penny on Sunday. So that's it. That is everything I spent in a week. So my weekly total of everything, travel, food, eating out, all that good stuff came to 238 pounds and four pence. Now, I actually don't think that's so bad. Over a seven day period, it is a lot of money. Definitely didn't need to buy the things in H&M. That was a treat. It's a very, very rare occasion. If you're living in London, you want to enjoy it. So the cocktails, for instance, we had such a nice evening. There was live music. So I don't think that was so bad. I don't feel guilty about that figure at all. But combined total with my rent bills, utilities is 541 pounds and 97 pence. Ouch. <laughs> So that, that does sound like a lot, but this is the reality of living in London. I absolutely can do that cheaper. 
For instance, I don't need, like if it came down to not having a car, it would be absolutely fine. We'd just have to spend more on a local gym. I'd have to do train tickets if I wanted to see my family. Weekend trips would be trains. It's not a big deal. I've did it for a long time. I could have do it, but it's part of those things. If you if you have the financial ability to do it, then why not? This is the bad thing about Hyperjar is you can really monitor your spending because it means you can see where your money is depleting from each pot. So if you know you've put say 60 pounds in the groceries and it's all gone, then you know you should have enough groceries to last you a week. We meal plan so much so every single ingredient we buy never goes to waste but yeah i really hope that has been somewhat insightful and useful maybe for anyone out there who's just wondering how expensive it is to live in london or if you're considering moving do leave any questions you have down below i'd also be interested to know if you've ever done this before and figured out how much you spend in a week is it more than me is it less than me do let me know huge thank you to hyperjar for sponsoring this video they are absolutely brilliant i'll leave them linked down below where you can set up your free account in minutes it literally takes no time at all and you can start tracking your spending saving and also getting some rewards which is fab thank you so much for watching guys i really hope you've enjoyed this one lots of love to you all take care stay safe and i'll catch you all very soon bye for now